as you can see, riding in the rain is totally fun. What's going on guys? Tool Cruise here in Nagoya, Japan. And today, you guessed it, we're gonna be talking about cycling in the rain. I've got some good tips for you guys. I've been actually wanting to make this video for a while now. And today, I had really good plans, but the rain is kind of ruining my ride, so. First, we're gonna head back to the studio where it's nice and dry, and then we'll go over my tips for cycling in the rain. Back here in the studio, nice and dry, had a nice shower. Today's ride was a bit miserable, just being in the rain all day, and if you've seen our recent cycling vlogs when we traveled in Taiwan, we've had enough with the rain, me and my wife, and yeah, I wasn't gonna do that today, so I've been actually wanting to make this video for a while, so this video about my recommendation and tips for cycling in the rain, and I just have been procrastinating, procrastinating, and just didn't have time to make the video, but today, because of this rainy ride, I finally have the motivation to do so, so let's go ahead and get started with the tips. There's gonna be a lot that we're gonna go over. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We make videos about cycling and life in Japan. Anyway, let's go ahead and begin. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the things that we wear, so like our clothing. And let's just start from the top down because it's easier to go in a directional way. So starting with the top, your head is the first contact point with the rain, so and it really sucks if your hair gets wet and it's just drenched forever. So there are a couple different things that you can do to avoid this. If you saw earlier in the video, I was wearing my hoodie from my jacket and put it underneath my helmet. So wearing some sort of hat or hoodie underneath your helmet really reduces the amount of rain that gets in. Another option is using like a cycling cap. So we've got our two wheel cruise cycling caps for sale. If you're interested, you can check the link over there. And yeah, so these work really good. Basically something in between your head and your helmet. So pretty simple, right? Moving down, another essential part that you want to protect is your eyes. So I really recommend using some sort of see-through glasses because when it's raining, it's usually darker than usual. So, so you can't use your normal shades because it's too dark. So I recommend getting some sort of clear lens. You can get cycling specific lenses, but as you can see, what I have here is just something really cheap that I got at like uh, a home center like Home Depot or something like that so whatever works and these are great they have a wider area so because these are like the home center protection kind of glasses they have a bit more range for blocking the rain that gets in so pretty solid of course the helmet itself so aero helmets are all the rage nowadays so the less ventilation above means there's less rain coming through so if you have a more aero style helmet or something that has a complete block on the top then yeah, it sucks and it's really hot in the summer, but you're protected from the rain, so that's another thing that really helps if you have a solid helmet. Okay, moving down from the neck below, we've got our, our main chest area, so of course you're gonna want some sort of jacket. And there are a bunch of different cycling-specific rain jackets that you can get. I found that most of these are really, really overpriced, and I tend to use some sort of alternative solution. So if you have the money and you wanna invest in a really good cycling specific rain jacket, go for it. But you might wanna consider some alternatives as well if you wanna save some money. There's two main types of jackets, the soft shell and more hard shell kind. So the soft shell is kinda of like this one here. This one cost me about $30, and I just got this at a general store here in Japan. We have a store called Uniqlo, so you can get this there. They still have these, they're really common. They're really lightweight, they fold down really well, they fit right in your pocket, but the disadvantage is they only work to a certain extent, so as the rain comes down heavier, you're gonna start to get wet and you don't really have complete protection and you're just gonna get soaked no matter what. The other option is the hard shell, so the more complete waterproof jacket. We've got a clip here with my wife modeling these from a couple months back when I wanted to start making this video. Check this out. If you live in a country or a place with a lot of rain like Japan, there's a lot of clothing available for rain, so rain preventative clothing. You can see the clothing here that my wife is wearing has a set, so you get the upper half jacket and you also get the pants below. So the pants are great. These are obviously not something that you wanna wear if you're going for a serious training ride, but if you're just commuting into work or something or you need to go run some errands, it's a really great solution because you're just completely protected and you can just take it all off when you get there. It's kind of a trade-off. Do you want something that's light and breathable, but not completely waterproof? Or do you want something that's 100% waterproof, but then heavier and bulkier and more getting in the way? Next, let's talk about footwear. So your normal cycling shoes are just gonna get soaked and that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. There are some solutions to get around this. For example, there are shoe covers that will completely cover 
your shoe and they're really hard to get on because they fit so tight that the water can't get in. For example, I think Velotoes is one of these companies. I don't personally use any of these, but I do know people who have used them and recommend them highly. So that's a pretty good option if you want something for your more serious rides. With the socks as well, you want to pick socks that don't absorb so much. So smaller socks are generally better. If you're just commuting, what I like to do is I like to wear my sandals or flip-flops that have sort of more hard soles. So the reason I do this is because if you're going to wear socks or something, they're just going to get wet anyway. So I just bring my pair of shoes to where I need to go, or I just leave a pair of work shoes in my office. So when I get there, I can just put on my shoes and I have my socks there. All right, I think we talked about most of the main body parts. Let's talk about some accessories as well. So for commuting and regular riding, you're likely to be carrying a bit of luggage. And one of the ways that I do this is with a backpack or some sort of camelback like this. So you'll see that this bag is not waterproof. You'll likely want to pick something that is waterproof, but in the case that it's not waterproof, there are some things that you can do. For example, you can get a plastic shell to go around your bag. This one actually comes with it in, in the bottom here. So you'll see that this pulls out cover the bag like this. So it's not 100% waterproof, but it works really good. But yeah, depending on where you live in the world, if you live in a rainy area like Japan, there's gonna be a lot of backpacks available that are waterproof. You may also want to get like a plastic bag to put your delicate stuff inside your bag if it's not waterproof. So I use this with smaller bags. For example, I use Ziploc bags and I put my like cell phone in here. So it's always protected, even though my cell phone is kind of technically waterproof. So Samsung Galaxy. Uh, but you never want to test that too much. If I'm bringing my camera with me on a ride and I'm filming stuff like I did today, I have an extra big Ziploc bag so it'll fit right in here. I can protect all my electronics. I always, always, always have some sort of Ziploc bag with me just to protect my delicate stuff. And I mean electronics, by the way. Oh! For the bike itself, fenders are a given. You have enough water coming down on you. You don't want any extra water coming up on you. So I actually don't have a fender myself, but I really wanted one on today's ride as I was getting just absolutely soaked riding through those giant puddles. Another important thing is lights, especially a backlight, because you don't want to get rear-ended by some car that can't see you. So even if it's daytime, there's not much daylight because of the rain, and you want your light on the blinking mode or some sort of movement one. You don't just want some static light, you want some movement in that light. That's been proven to be just way, way, way safer. If you're riding in the rain a long time, you might want to use some specific chain lubricant that's meant for wet conditions. And also just drying off your bike at the end of the ride, just wiping it down with a towel real quick saves you the hassle of having to clean your bike later. I try and do it right after my ride, um, but you all know I'm not the best with bike maintenance and keeping my bikes clean. But anyway, that's what you should do. Don't, it's not necessarily what I do, but it's what you should do. So wrapping up, there's still a few other things that I wanted to mention and one of those is just how you're riding the bike. So keep in mind that when you're riding in the rain, the conditions are completely different than riding in dry conditions. So you can't quite take a turn as fast as you normally would. I recommend dropping down your air pressure. So I normally ride around 110, 120 PSI in my road bike, but if it's raining, I'll go down quite a bit. And I usually go by feel, but I would say it's maybe around 80 or so. And depending on what tires you have, if you have wider tires, you might be able to go lower or if you're riding some sort of mountain bike road tires or hybrid tires or even even tubeless you might be able to go even lower depending on your setup and again going going back to those corners there's a huge difference in your braking power as you're braking so if you're using normal caliper road brakes those ones will definitely have this really really big difference in power and especially if you're using like carbon wheels and carbon rims like you're not going to get any braking power Fortunately, a lot of people are making the switch to disc brakes now. So right now I'm using my cross bike, which has disc brakes. So I had no problems braking in the rain today. Um, but even then, if you, if you sort of try and brake too quickly, you might slide. Speaking of sliding, you have to be careful of what areas are really kind of dangerous. So on the course today, there was some mud that got onto the course, which caused me to slide a little bit. And so different types of pavement are more uh, slippery in the rain. So for example, lines on the road are really, really dangerous. And Japan has a lot of big painted, they, have, they paint all over on their roads. They'll have a whole section that's like all red, all blue or something. And this type of pavement can be a little bit dangerous if you're changing from one to the other one and you're not quite expecting that. And also depending on type, like what type of bricks you are, if there's some sort of slippery bricks on the sidewalk, Japan has a lot of these as well. And if you're just on those, it's kind of like glass. If you try turning on those, you're just going to slip and slide. And this has happened to me a couple of times here, a few more than I'd like to admit. But uh, 
Yeah, just be careful. There's different types of concrete. There's different types of bricks. There's different types of riding surfaces that you're on. And every time you change from one to another, every time you hit some sort of bump, you're going to be risking losing traction. And standing up on the bike can be a little bit dangerous as well. So instead of standing up where you normally would, you might want to try and sit down and spin through that hill if you're climbing or something like that. And last but not least is reflective gear. If this just goes along with the lights, you want to make yourself as visible as possible. And this is true in really any situation, but especially more so at night or in rainy conditions. Whew. Is that everything? <laughs> So yeah, this is a pretty big topic and I'm sure there's something I missed. If you have any other ideas or good suggestions for riding, cycling in the rain, please leave it below in the comments for everyone to see. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it useful. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, Two Wheel Cruise, and we make weekly videos here about cycling, life in Japan, and everything in between. You can also check us out on social media, so we're most active on Instagram. You can catch up on all the live updates and stuff like that. And before we end our video today, I'd like to give a big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. We've had a couple new people join us lately. A big, big thank you to you guys. Your support goes a long way into helping make this channel the best that it is. And it's really motivating me to continue making more and more content. And for anyone else who's interested in help supporting the channel, you can go check out our Patreon down below. We have some new rewards like early access to videos and no ads during the early access. So that's pretty cool. Another way you can help support the channel is with our awesome merchandise. You can get your very own Two Wheel Cruise custom shirt. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, we have our custom cycling caps and jerseys. You can see the beautiful jersey right behind me here in the studio. Um, all of those things go a long way to help support the channel and help my wife and I make these videos about cycling and life in Japan. If you have any other ideas that you'd like us to go over in a video topic in the future, let us know in the comments down below as well. And that's it for real this time. Thanks again to everyone and we'll see you in the next video.